All right, we are live. Welcome back to hey. another edition of the Virtual Vaults Festival Bottling Star, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, first of all, great group in here. I, you guys have been checking up on the comments. Happy Tuesday, first of all. Welcome everybody. And you can you can notice right away, right, it's not just alive. me by myself and I don't have one of the usual suspects either. Next to me, oh, wait, this way. Yeah, this right. way is Mr. Right. Tom right. Smith. <laughs> Um, I think some of you know Tom. You may have met Tom in person. But hey, everybody. Tom is a colleague of mine, senior director of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society in the U.S. And, oh, and obviously, this is his first time on camera. Mr. Yeah, Andrew Golden calls out, Tom is on camera. And it's uh, probably, so and right. that's for Tiger says, whoa, Ben and Tom. Nice to see Tom. Tom, introduce yourself. Welcome. And thanks for joining. Hey, thank you so much for having me. And um yeah, I, this is my first go at, at this sort of thing. I'm, I'm used to doing events for people in person. So I've always been a bit trepidatious about uh, kind of doing doing this situation, but I'll, uh, you know, I'll do my best, Ben, not to fully sabotage your live stream. But, uh, but yeah, um, uh, thanks everyone for tuning in and thanks for your continued support of the society. We, we certainly appreciate you and, um, so uh, just a few things about me, for those of you who haven't met me. Um, my name is Tom Smith. I've been with the Society now since um, since taking over from the Shanes in uh, July, I guess, of 2016. So what started as sort of a behind the scenes transition, kind of fully transitioned in April of 17. And our team has been slowly growing uh, since then. Uh, so since the beginning, I've, I've kind of been uh, focused on sales. Um, so, so my day to day is typically managing the inventory that is uh, being produced in Scotland that's allocated for the United States chapter and, uh, kind of shepherding that across the pond, um, and, and deciding when everything gets released. So, um, I guess if you have any complaints on that and send them my way, it's, uh, it's not Ben's fault, I promise. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so so essentially, I'm building out the outturns every month, um, and and usually with a scope of about uh, four to six months ahead of time, and, uh, and and of course we're always doing our best to to balance, um, you know, the, the different distillery numbers, um, flavor profiles, of course, barrel protocols, age. So it's it's just always kind of a a jigsaw puzzle that you're you're putting together, but it's it's a lot of fun to do. And, and the most fun is when it actually gets to release time and we, we get to do the events around the country with, uh, with a lot of our members, many of whom I, I imagine are, uh, are here today, um, chatting away there in, in the, in, on the live stream. So, so yeah, so, so I do a lot of the sales. Um, and then for those of you who live in the Northeast, uh, what comedian Jim Gaffigan calls the corridor of hate, uh, from uh, maybe Philly, uh, DC, all the way up to Boston. Uh, that's my beat uh, as far as live events are concerned. Every so often, you'll see me, uh, you know, riding on the coattails of Charlie McLean or, or somebody else across the country and out west. Um, but mostly, I'm in, I'm based in New York, and I'm doing events in New York, DC, Philadelphia, um, uh, Boston, and uh, and sometimes we'll you know pop out to Denver and other places like that. But but yeah, so um, I've gotten to shake hands and, and share a lot of drams with members from those areas and on a lot more limited basis, members in uh, Chicago, Miami, um, in Texas, in, the, in Austin and um, uh, Dallas area, as well as Houston, very briefly. Um, and then in the West Coast in Seattle, uh, San Francisco, Portland um, and uh, Los Angeles. So um, I look forward to meeting a lot more people. Uh, really, you know, what we do is best when we're doing it in the company of, of others. So, uh, you know, I guess we'll, we'll kind of take this as a, as a poor substitution for, for, um, for being with you guys and, and toasting and, and uh, enjoying these, these pretty special whiskeys together. So. So for as long as I've known Tom, for a few years now, he has been adamant that, one, he is not to 
enter the realm of social media ever. And then two, he wants to be the behind the scenes guy. And so being on camera is a pretty unique occurrence. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's safe to assume that over the last you know few weeks with the pandemic, we've been doing a lot of these live streams. You've been chatting in the comments with you know everybody. Yeah, I like uh, the chat. It's fun, it's fun. <laughs> it is, it is a lot of fun actually. Um, it, it's pretty rapid fire. It's a bit difficult to keep up with all of the questions that are that are coming out. And then you see like a few folks clearly know each other and uh, and and you know they, they kind of go off on their own tangent. So it's it's kind of fun to watch that that too. Uh, so relationships are are developing even when we're you know we're not actually physically together. So that's well, pretty fun. But but yeah so so just um yeah to, to um I guess color in Ben's point there. I actually I, I've never been on social media like in my life. And I and I guess from a guy like with a guy named Tom Smith, you, you might expect that. But you know, I, I guess <laughs> what started out as maybe like lethargy just kind of evolved into this, like I'm uh, you know, I'm just gonna spike this whole thing and, and never do it. So here we are. I mean, you know, I was in the seventh grade when the basically when email was created. So I watched the whole thing from the sidelines, and um, you know, sometimes it seems that I'm missing out on things, but most times I'm okay to just sit in front of a fire and and drink a whiskey and leave it at that. Well, this may be Tom's first appearance, but he's getting no shortage of love in the comments here. Charles oh, yeah? says, "Hey, Tom, uh, Adam Faye, hi from NYC." Nicholas says, "Hi, Ben and Tom. Nice to see Tom." And then we have, let's see. Let's see a lot of hi Tom, hi Tom, Nick S, hi Tom and Ben. Oh, oh, Charles Hoffman says Tom the beard. Tom, yeah, that quarantine beard is coming in quite nicely. Charlie, yeah, I've, I've actually trimmed it down. Um, so it was uh, it was getting to be a bit of a uh, a Dave Broom beard at one point, but I had to I had to dial it back. Um, you know, I am I am sheltering in place with my wife, and she tends to have an opinion on that. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's scaled scaled back a bit, but but. Uh, Trying to keep it robust, trying to keep it real for everybody. Yeah. And uh, Doc Doc Lurin says, wow, Tom is online. Good to see you both. Hey, okay, I'm sorry. I've got to interrupt you here. So so uh, Dr. Matt Lurin, um, so everybody knows Matt uh, in, in New York. And, uh, I mean, anybody who goes to Isla Festival will, it's a Fegiel, will run into Matt there somewhere. I did it at Brua Claudia a few years ago. So uh, Matt is uh, – a, a, a very, very passionate collector. He's been a member for decades. But most importantly, um, over the last few months, this gentleman has been the front of front lines as an ER physician in New York City. So you're talking about a doctor who's who's in the emergency room in the epicenter of, of, of this craziness. So a big shout out and a big, big thank you to Matt. Thank you so much. And, and all the others like uh, Matt Lurin who were Kind of putting themselves out there on a daily basis to to help everybody out. So, thank you. Just I had to sh shout him out for a second. Yeah, let's. I mean, if if you're all watching this live, we're all in this current pandemic, and if you're catching the replay, just for a little context, um, yeah, it is wild. I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like for all the doctors and, and medical professionals out there, just on the front lines. It, it's it's scary, I think, in some sense, but I, again, I couldn't imagine. So I I, I too appreciate just all the, all the work and effort and sacrifice that's going into this. Um, but on that note, sort of sw switching gears a little bit, as you can probably tell, everybody who's, who's joined in, today is a special day here at the Scotchmore Whiskey Society. Uh, and Tom's presence is no coincidence. We're gonna be celebrating the region of Campbelltown. Um, I had asked Tom to join and, and break his anti-social media or anti-camera stance uh, for this reason, because it was about a year and a week ago that Tom and I had the privilege of going to Campbelltown together. Uh, and so I, I think we, we, within that, I asked Tom to come in. I, you know, we'll be, we'll be unveiling momentarily, I think, our, our celebratory cask for the Campbelltown Malts Festival. And I, I just thought with this, it would be good to hear Tom's opinion too of Campbelltown and provide a little context for the whiskey that we're tasting. Because uh, I, I can tell you, we both had a hell of a time. It was an unforgettable experience. It was brief. But I think we uh, left our, you know, our, everything we had on the court. When we were there, so uh, Tom, just a quick thought on, of, of just reflection of Campbelltown or, or your history with Campbelltown whiskey, or and where you're at today. Oh wow! Um, well, it, it it certainly goes back years and years. Um, 
there's only so much you can work with in, in Campbelltown, um, you know, since there are only you know three operating distilleries there. But um, you know, in in the context of the society, we've we've dealt pretty heavily with uh, with one distillery from Campbelltown and and rather sporadically with uh, another. Um, but what, what Campbelltown has has come to be known to me as is sort of the the best source for the oily and coastal flavor profile. I mean, that's that's something that it's a flavor profile that I've really grown into. I'll always tell people it's my favorite if I'm asked. And um, and it, just the complexity that you get between the malt richness and the the maritime location and and how that might uh, express itself in the whiskey. Um, you know, it's it's it really creates a lot of complexity in the glass, and and typically it's fairly nuanced. It's not you know crazy bells and whistles you know sounding off on your palate. You know, you you, you search for it a bit more, and you're rewarded, I think, with with a bit of patience and and uh, exploration. So so when I think of Campbelltown, I, I mean you can't I mean, you just. I, I always go back to this this oily and coastal um, sort of profile, and 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 it's a very comforting place for me. So I was extremely elated when I find, found out that that was sort of the the trip that we were gonna a very quick trip, albeit um, that we were gonna take after we were done with our meetings in Edinburgh. So so just to paint a little picture for you folks, last year. We, we were able to go over to Edinburgh for a few days where um, chapters from around the world, as far as China and Australia, um, come together. Uh, Japan is there, uh, the EU and the United States. Um, we all get together and sort of brainstorm and come up with, uh, with new things and just kind of best learnings and, and that sort of thing. And uh, that, that typically is the first half of, of, a, of a week. And then the second half, if you don't have too many other meetings, you can sort of you know, get lost in Scotland somewhere, and uh, and we decided to uh, to go to Campbelltown for uh, for twenty four hours of mayhem, basically. Uh, <laughs> so um, so we uh, originally were supposed to be joined by a gentleman who many of you probably know through um, through social media and just through the whiskey world at large, a gent named Matt Bailey uh, down in Australia, who is who is the national brand ambassador for the society there. Um, he's a hell of a guy and uh, just one of the smartest whiskey heads I've, I've ever met. Um, his his knowledge is truly encyclopedic and and uh, is certainly you know a, a great inspiration to a lot of us. But anyway, Matt couldn't go, so we had to settle for um, the spirits manager of the Global Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, a gentleman named Ewan Campbell. Um, and uh, if you've ever had the opportunity to spend even five minutes with Ewan, you'll know that you're in the company of, of a quiet genius. Like this guy is just wild. He, um, every, every word that comes out of his mouth means something in the context of your conversation. There's no fluff with this guy. And he brings that to the, uh, you know, to the table when he's managing the, the tens of thousands of casts that he is responsible for. So, uh, so the three of us, uh, Ben, myself, and Ewan, um, hit the road. I had rented what was supposed to be a Ford Escape, but we got handed the keys to a Jaguar F Pace. So that was pretty cool, right? I it was mean, a slow week at Enterprise <laughs> Rentals. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, Edinburgh Airport really treated us nicely. So we we hopped in the car, and um, you know, we took off. We started at six a.m. About a four and a half hour drive. And uh, we properly stopped in uh, Inverary for a good old fashioned fry up, as as um, Ewan would say. So we got some uh, a nice hearty meal on our way to uh, to Campbelltown. And, and I mean, you know, you're you're starting on the highway, yes, right out of Edinburgh. But within 30, 40, 50 minutes, you're you're in the country, and you're driving on beautiful country roads through the mountains and skirting the coast. And, and it's a gorgeous drive. I, I certainly oh, recommend. It. Beautiful, wasn't? It? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then, um, you know, at about 
I'd say at about 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m., we, uh, we kind of rolled into the fairly sleepy harbor village of, uh, of Campbelltown. And just that the, the beautiful horseshoe-shaped harbor. I mean, you see it in all the pictures, but and and it certainly it was a beautiful sunny day, right? So it certainly was as idyllic as you've seen in pictures. But man, the smells—you can't capture the smells in in photography, and and that that was something that really stuck with me. Just the freshness, the salinity, a bit of the seaweed, and and and. Um, you know, just that beautiful fresh air. Uh, it's quite nice. So. Yeah, Campbellton really surprised me. I mean, I mean, just if anyone's been there, please, we'd love to hear your thoughts, you know, in the comments as well. But for me, I think getting there, having had visited Isla before, I had this expectation that, that it would maybe be a little bit similar. Of course, it's you can see it, Isla, in the distance from Campbelltown. But Campbelltown was a town. I mean, it's a small town at what feels like the edge of the earth. And it has a small town vibe, and there just happens to be three distilleries in this town. Uh, I would, I think that contrasts to Isla, which is an island that, to me, feels that it's almost built for whiskey. It's like a whiskey mecca. But this is a real working town, and it was so quiet. And yeah, we had a chance to go there on a beautiful day. Um, but I, I, enjoy, I really enjoyed the town of Cam the town itself, as much as I did the, the distilleries. Uh, yeah, it was it was lovely walking around the village for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and it is it is a place you can walk, you know, rather easily. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, I mean, we were there clearly on a mission, but I'm sure that there are all kinds of little nooks and crannies, local shops and whatnot that that you could you could get lost in. But since we were only there for literally that Thursday, we had a we had a fairly regimented afternoon, I guess, from yeah. from about 12 to four. Uh, we were pretty we we're pretty locked in. But, yeah, uh, a little, yeah. little insider tip because I know it's it's been it was a popular cast last year amongst our members here in the U.S. Um, we released a U.S. exclusive cast called Barbecue and Fishnets. It was cast number ninety three point one one four from Campbelltown, and we we had selected that cast uh, before the trip and 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 justified it essentially going to Campbelltown to photograph the bottle in its natural environment. You know, so when it came time to unveiling it to our members, we'd have that experience, and, and I think that was fantastic. And, and obviously, tasting the whiskey in Campbelltown there. Um, but maybe we should segue into, you know, obviously what everyone's here for today, which is the Campbelltown Malts Festival uh, yeah, cast right. release. Well, you put it up. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, it's funny unveiling these festival bottlings in this format is it, it's been pretty funny because it's the no no frills approach. Um, you can probably already see that the blue label is showing. Um, but to start, we have one today. You know, we've had several uh, last week and Tuesday. We started with the Spirit of Space Side Festival. We had a few casts to sample for that. Uh, Thursday, we followed up with a Highland Festival. We had one official festival bottling, but some other Highland casks. Today, we just have one. And um, I'll just give you a little preview that coming, we'll be coming back on Thursday with Isla, and we'll have several. This is just one. And I think it's interesting because Campbelltown, and you tell me, Tom, when you taste the whiskey, you, you mentioned oily and coastal, but what we tasted from Campbelltown, we have a good range of peated whiskeys, really smoky to sort of lightly peated, lightly smoky, or none at all. And and I think the, the sort of the unpeated style of Campbelltown whiskey really showcases, you know, the spirit, the terroir, like the, the it tastes more of the earth than I think the peated ones do. And for some reason, I've always really latched onto the unpeated ones. You know, our U.S. exclusive last year was an unpeated. It was an a port, port, excuse me, port cask. But this, to me, what we're about to taste, I think is again from my experience last year that we had together. This is the most evocative of being on in Campbelltown, just being at the, on the peninsula, being there, taking in the smells of the sea and the earth that you described earlier. Right. Um, yeah. And so the style, to me, seem it, it seems the, like the most Campbelltown esque of Campbelltown whiskeys. Okay. Yeah, that's my opinion. So we'll I'll, we'll taste it again, and we'll we'll see. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it definitely it does not lack the complexity, you know. And and while I think, uh, well, I don't I don't want to lead you on. I mean, I'll let you taste. I I, I have uh, given this a good nose. I haven't tasted it yet, but okay. um, but yeah. So I opened this uh, at this point about an hour ago. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it is not bad. But I I, I certainly know what you're saying. It, it's 
it's almost like you know drawing comparisons from uh, you know some of the unpeated uh, islas out there you know that that have mm -hmm. such a strong following that really um, dote on the nuance and 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 all those lovely little complexities that are that are that are just uh, creating this this larger uh, body of you know this composition that's it's a uh, it, it's quite beautiful and. Um, and, you know, not at all like in your face, like, sure, we can find heavily peated that's it's really big and, and, you know, it's all about the PPMs and the, you know, that sort of impact. But there's something to be said about the quiet, cool of, of an unpeated uh, whiskey from a, from a coastal area. Um, so not just not just Campbelltown or Isla, but, you know, look at look at the uh, Isle of Mull, um, look at Orkney. Uh, even on the north coast of the mainland, uh, the North Sea, you know, you, you find some great examples there as well. Um, so, yeah, and, and, you know, today we're focusing on one particular festival bottling, but there are such brilliant examples that the society offers from, from all over Scotland. So, um, yeah. Well, now that we're all frothing at the mouth. Yeah, right. <laughs> here it is. It's cask 93128 I'm going to try to see if I can get that focused. There we go. Can you see that? There you go. Just keep it right there. Yeah. Called Smoke and Smugglers, 17 year old Campbellton whiskey, um, ball at 54.9%. The cast type is American Oak X Bourbon Hogshead. So essentially, you know, my, to me, that's that's the most classic style of cask, you know, for Scotch whiskey maturation. And, and with that type of cask, I think it really allows the spirit to shine through. So that, you know, that was my. It's been a while since I tasted this last week when the bottle was first opened and then I divvied up some samples and haven't gone back since. But my first impression was that. Let's see what we think. You wanna go ahead with your first impression and then I'll I'll follow suit. Sure. I'll show the bottle. Well, I mean, backing up, I guess a bit, yeah. it does carry a, a really nice color. Um, a little from a refill hoggy, I, I would think it might be possibly a couple shades paler, um, which could potentially um, indicate that that this refill is maybe a third or a fourth refill. You know, it still has a bit of activity there. Uh, but yeah, nice, nice uh, kind of firm golden color. Oh, man. And yeah, the, the first aromas that are really, sorry if I'm muffling because I'm talking through a glass here, but just a very, very thin veil, like a whisper of smokiness um, that immediately gives way to, to more of a, of a kind of a confection core um, and certainly like sitting in front of like a raw bar platter. Like you know, something you you get at a swanky seafood restaurant. Oh man, it's it's so nuanced. So and that's what I appreciate about it. You know, it's subtle, but you really have to sort of get in there. But once you're in it, man, there's such a nice balance between the salinity, like a little bit of sort of sea foam aspect, but it's really sort of malty and bright. Yeah, you're definitely sensing the malt richness behind all of all of that that, that kind of smoky salinity. Yeah, and, I mean, smoky is even a harsh word that might kind of intimate stronger aromas than are really coming through. It's there, there's a delicacy to it. Yeah, it's just, it's a light puff of smoke for me, but then a little bit of char. But the seafood note, you know, it's funny, you mentioned the raw, it's like sitting in front of a raw bar at a swanky restaurant. I'm no raw bar aficionado, but I do get a little bit of note of like, like a steam mussels. Yeah, um, and also uh, kind of like, if you were to, if you were to take like some prawns and, and like barbecue them a little bit, like a kind of a, a charred, like that, that charred, prawn type thing from a barbecue yeah yeah definitely coming through but now oh, man. but also you you have some fruits now emerging you have some tropical um certainly a 
a note of almost like banana toffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Banana toffee, yeah. Or taffy, like banana taffy. You know, it's like, it's not quite like fresh banana, but it's a little, little different. So Michael Hart says, hello. He, he's been a member for 20 years. He says, um, Chris Pugafusco, I'm sorry, Chris, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but Chris mentions what's a restaurant, which I presume is my comment about the, the raw bar in a restaurant and the fact that we haven't been to restaurants in a long time, which is sad, but also a funny, a funny call out as well. Oh, man. Um, oh, yeah. Man. It's interesting because I, I think we've been led to believe, or maybe just from our experience that wine casks or finishing and, and, and whatnot, and, and really sort of heavy cask influence will result in complexity. And that sort of sometimes we, I think we wrongly assume that American oak or like a classic, just a hogshead like this is incapable of producing whiskey that are as complex. But to me, I think this is a great example for why that's not the case. Why I think, I just think that's a popular, you know, misbelief that we, we've, I, I once had you know, years back, but there's so much going on in this whiskey right here from a classic bourbon hogshead. Um, it's it, it's it's mind blowing to me, and I think it's one of the I don't know. It's not a, I can't I'm not gonna pick favorites here, but I have to say this is a it's it's spectacular. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> No, I mean, yes. Going back to your point about about the reef, about the hogsheads, and you know, ex ex bourbon casks. Um, my my comment about bells and whistles. You know, I mean, it, people want to be wowed. A lot of folks want to be wowed. Like I I liken it. If you guys will, please forgive me, but you know, I, I haven't only been in in spirits for uh, twenty years at this point, but also wine. And and I think back to when I first entered the wine industry, and I was gravitating towards at the ripe age of 21 years old um, was Barossa Valley Shiraz, McLaren Vale Shiraz, like big, booming, juicy fruits that body slammed your palate. And, you know, as as your tastes evolve, you kind of get away from things like that. And, you know, now it's like old world European wines and that sort of thing. And And considering Scotch whiskey, I think is is as com almost as complex as, as wine, probably as complex and certainly the most complex spirit out there. Don't be surprised if your palates sort of see that evolution for lack of a better term, you know, uh, where perhaps these days you're really into X Sherry, um, whether it's PX or Oloroso or something else. I mean, maybe a few years from now, you're gonna be like, all right, that's a good style, but you know, what is there in, in another type of cask or, or another region? And, um, you, you know, it, it, there's so many, so many flavor aspects that are created in the distillery well before it even enters the cask for maturation. Um, and, and certainly I think a refill cask is, is going to let the, the make, the actual DNA of the whiskey itself speak through a little better in any case. So, um, yeah. Am I rambling? Is this, would this be considered a ramble? I think this is I don't know. on topic. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is, this is exactly uh, what it is. Like give me a, a high five or something if I'm, uh, if I'm going off. And so, at, my, at my events, no, I can do this. So they're, they're with me. But for all you yeah. other folks, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, just to kind of recap. So this is the one uh, festival bottling we'll be releasing today in actually just over 30 minutes at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, it's pretty limited in, in quantity. I, I, I want to say, Tom, do you know if Hannah, around 70 bottles, perhaps? You know, keep in mind that so on the bottle it says one of 213. That is total bottles from the cast. Yeah, that was the full disgorgement. That was the full outturn from the barrel. Yeah. Um, we were uh, we were allocated um, 66 bottles of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, so yeah, and so for each of these, you know, it's a bit of a. It, sometimes there are um, negotiations that go on uh, behind the scenes that, that arrive at these numbers. But, you know, I think considering that the disgorgement is about 200 bottles, this is a fair allocation. Um, of yeah. course, we always want more. We want more for our members. But we need to also keep in mind that this is a global society with 
30,000 members around the world who are all just as thirsty as the American members. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, so we got to spread the love a bit. And you know, let's be frank, um, these 60 or so bottles are going to sell out very, very quickly today. Um, but for those of you who are lovers of, of this style, um, of this particular number 93, fear not. Um, there are no less than five more uh, of, of this distillery being released um, by, by September. Yeah, well, we, we, you know, that, and that's a good point too. And, and we have, you know, th this is this is one bottling. This is one single cask iteration, but there are there are so many more to explore um, coming down the, the pipeline, and and that's a big part of all this. You know, we we sign up as members to get access to these whiskeys, and yes, sometimes it, it it's it's freaking frustrating to like not get that bottle you were gunning for. But what we need to keep in mind is there's always more being released. There's always more coming down the pipeline. And right now we have, you know, well over 10,000 casks quietly resting in Scotland. So th th we're just going to see more. Um, so hopefully that that is a, a, a small consolation for those of you who may try uh, to get a bottle that you really want and, and don't quite get through the checkout process. Um, I know it's frustrating, and and we're uh, we're we're trying to address that. But you know, the, we do have to remember that we're in a finite business here with single cask whiskey, so it is kind of the nature of the beast. Well, the good news is, and and to your point, look, I know, and a lot of our members, you've been asking for it. We have a lot more whiskey coming. It, it's just a it's, it's a delicate process. I think of this as a society, we have to take the stance in that you know we have to maintain the level of quality of, of spirits and. Every cask goes through a rigorous tasting process by our tasting panel in Edinburgh. Uh, we can't rush that, and we can't. Of course, we don't want them to start bottling whiskeys that are casks that are probably not ready to be bottled yet. That's not the direction we're to go. But we are fortunate to have a healthy stock that, that's coming over here to the U.S. But this one, I just want to kind of go back to it. This ninety-three point one two eight smokers and smugglers is um, smoking I'm, smugglers. Yeah, I'm sorry, smoking smugglers. Yeah, I was trying to focus. Smoking smugglers is, I think. Mm. Is, is 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 just it's, it's a remarkable whiskey it's it's funny when you know what all the festival bottlings here had arrived to then divvy up for our tastings um i found myself in this unique position that i think I once probably dreamt of of just opening all of them and, and deciding which one to try first and you know again this is this isn't saying anything of how the, it compares to others but it caught my eye as as first and it's the one i opened first and poured right away and uh, of course, then I ended up just trying them all, but it, within the first 10 minutes. But and nonetheless, it, it caught my eye because I think when we see Campbelltown whiskey, you know, it, 17 years is actually sort of a, it's got some good, that's good, some good age behind that's it. Some very good age on it. Yeah. We, we tend to see the, the 10 around young, or sometimes eight, nine, 10 year olds have been fantastic. We've seen some sort of early teens, but this is one of the older ones we've seen in a while. And I think I, I was attracted to the fact that. Uh, it's just pure American oak, expert in hogshead, which really allow that spirit, a 17 year old spirit to shine through. Uh, yeah, I have no more to say about it. It's, it's, it's phenomenal whiskey. Well, we could talk about the palate a little bit. Yeah, Did go you ahead. Have you tasted it yet? Have you just been um, it well, week? actually, I, I tasted it, then I poured myself a second. So, there oh, wow. yeah. nice so, All so right. I, I, I did that sort of slyly. Someone called me out, and I appreciate that they saw. It would be a nice day in Chicago for Ben. Very good. But it's a bit of like a, it's been a cold, uh, rainy day. I saw someone mention the comment here in Chicago. It's flooded. We we've dealt with some flooding here as well. Oh, no. um, but so this is a kind of appropriate whiskey for this sort of weather, cold and coastal, even though we're landlocked here in the Midwest. Mm. Well, that that malt is really coming through. Um, I I am not. I'm not getting a whole lot of the smoke that I picked up, the, the you know the that light smokiness that I picked up on the nose. That's not coming through on the meat palate for me. Um, some really nice kind of white pepper spice towards the mid palate to the finish. Um, the grain is there. The, you know the the cereal character is there, um, along with kind of more crisp. I mean, to be honest with you, almost more like kind of space side type orchard fruit, like 
green apple pear kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, and on the finish now, certainly some more of the maritime character is is uh, coming back through. I haven't added water yet, so. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it at neat. 54.9% is ABV. I thought it neat, it was really spot on and dangerously approachable, but I did add a little bit of water and I'm just nosing it. It actually, you know, for me, it actually brings out a little bit more of the smoke. Like it's just, it's just sort of a very faint whisper of smoke, but mm -hmm. the water sort of brings out more of that, but reduces like the char, like the wood influences down, but I get, I get more of the smoke and more of the fruit, that sort of orchard fruit undertone. And the texture is there. I mean, it, it's it's under this profile for a, a very good reason. I mean, the, that oily character in all the right ways. I mean, um, very very silky. Yeah, I just wish we could drink this every day, and there was more for us all to you know enjoy. But man, this one is a. I don't know. I'm actually at a loss for words for once. Well, there certainly is an evolution. And of course we, you know, how long have we been tasting this? Really? We've been tasting it for maybe, uh, you know, I've been nosing it, I guess for an hour, but you know, it's different when you're at home and you can really take your time and kind of play around with water additions and then scotch additions and, and such. But um, I imagine this has a lot more to, to show us, in in kind of a wider um time frame but but there's there's a lot going on right now even in this fairly quick um inspection of it it's a really really nice whiskey you remember at this distillery ben we were uh we had the um we had the the privilege of tasting some new make that was being filled into the barrels. You remember that? We did. We uh, have a nice video of that of, of this. Well, we tasted the new make spirit, but then we also had it at the filling pro stage. Uh, I, I mean, Tom and I had we we and with you and Campbell, we we had a phenomenal experience there. Uh, I think every step of the way, I, I felt more in touch with the spirit. You know, you know. Again, anytime you visit a distillery, if you can taste the new make, it's always an amazing experience because it gives you a good foundation for what that's going to taste like and how that's going to evolve with the influence of wood. But I, I was so impressed by the new make, um, and then also, yes, tasting that as it was just filled into it, and those were fresh bourbon barrels. That was a, uh, yeah, yeah. But then also the warehouse tasting we did. You know, I, I, I perhaps part of the reason this appealed to me is because when we were there, we tasted different types of casks different ages. Um, and the ones that were similar to this were actually the ones that, I don't know, blew me away the most. It's just the sort of mid teens to sort of older, um, unpeated or, or very, very low peated, peated at that level. Yeah. This distillery doesn't really get to, they, even when they are peating, when, when they call it medium peated or heavily peated, you know, the, they're not really getting too high on the, on the phenol count on the PPMs. So, even when they are like full, fully peating to their standards, that's, you know, it's a fraction of what you're going to find in, in other peated expressions, Yeah, yeah. which you know, allows for more of that complexity. I think it's not quite so monolithic um, as some might, might become with, you know, with too much smoke. Um, but here, yeah, you have this confluence of the maritime, the, the salinity, the fruit and the cereal all kind of, you know, ebbing and flowing with each other. And, and it's a, it's a really enjoyable dram. Um, it's, it's very, very nice. And, you know, from this distillery later on in the month, uh, or excuse me, later on in the year, um, you, you are going to see some that are, that are oily and coastal, lightly peated, still others that I, I think are, are fully unpeated. So uh, you're looking at like sweet, fruity and mellow perhaps, but, you know, you know, it's nice to see different expressions from from the same distillery, sort of uh, side by side, if you can, if you have that ability, mm -hmm. and, and that really um, drives home the single cask and, and why it's so special. You know, why these little snapshots of, of of the life of whiskey are you know in front of us are are so different and so dynamic. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up now because I know we 
about to get a little busy in, in 20 minutes time with the official release of this cask. And as Tom mentioned, there are, how many How many are in total? Under 70, you said? Bottles? Sorry? How many are available? How many bottles available? Oh no, is it, we were allocated 60, 66. So I think about uh, 60 or so yeah. uh, are available today. That includes, um, I mean, we have, we have- Hello, sir, good to see you. I just yeah, saw Simon think... come up in the thing. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I was just going to say, just to, to clarify, you know, why there are less than the, the printed allocation. There's some that we had to pull for, you know, this purpose right. and whatnot. Um, yeah. So in case you're wondering, but yeah, but so in 20 minutes time, I would suggest, you know, if you're if a current member, I, I would log on, get ready. If you're not a member, uh, you know, the whiskey is available exclusively to members, but you're, we invite you to join us. I um, mean, if you're not a member, you should just, you should just sign up. It's going to change your life. I mean, <laughs> well, it's effectively changed yeah. mine. So yeah. So, I mean, just jump yeah. in. The whiskey's lovely. It's, it's really yeah. nice. That is uh, an official endorsement from Tom Smith. <laughs> um, we, we have, <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll get on that later. But so thank you all for joining. Thanks for tuning in. Um, really appreciate the interest overall with Kemelton Whiskey. And it's funny, we've actually noticed in the back end, we look at our website analytics, uh, Campbelltown and Distillery 93 are the two of the most popular search terms amongst our members and all of last year. Um, so we're certainly trying to, to help support that and we have a lot more coming out beyond just today but if you do snag a bottle of this you know share it with your friends uh it's, it's gonna be pretty limited in, in in quantities so and uh enjoy it amongst all things so and thanks thanks for having me ben on your uh, you know it, it's been fun i don't know maybe maybe you'll invite me back I, i'm not sure it's, it's this is the thing I, I mean tom you've become you've been a popular guest and uh we appreciate your insight of course and uh the tasting notes that are equally as brilliant as our official tasting notes, I have to say. Uh, Tom Tom is a liquid poet in that sense, but so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, cheers, all right, all. Cheers, well, Tom. Thank you, cheers. Thank you all. Well, we'll see you back here on Thursday with 